Ben Schwartz here with Marty Music, hanging out with Luther Dickinson from North Mississippi All-Stars, one of my favorite albums of all time, The Word. We're going to talk about that. Phil Lesh, Black Crows, family of musicians. Dad was an epic producer. I mean, there's so much to get into, but you're my favorite, oh. Dickinson. And you grew up in a musical family. You and your brother play music yes. currently together. Uh, my brother Cody, play, he's a multi-instrumentalist, but he plays drums in the North Mississippi All-Stars. North Mississippi All-Stars, and everyone. That was inspired by the musical community we grew up in, in like our 20s, which was like R.L. Burnside, Otha Turner, Fife and Drum Music, and Junior Kimbrough. The whole Fat Possum experience. But yeah, uh, but you were our like father was a, a Memphis, like first generation Memphis rock and roller. He was five years younger than Elvis. Right. But dad had a high school rock and roll band uh, playing frat parties and stuff. There were only two in the 50s, you know? <laughs> like kids playing rock and roll right. and blues. Uh, like they opened up for Bo Diddley. That, long story short, that's how they discovered open tuning. Because they were all playing Bo, they would play Bo Diddley all night, but they were doing it in a standard. And then when they opened up for Bo Diddley, they were looking at his hands and they were going, what is he doing? He's not even making chords. Is that what you were using in our intro? Can yeah. you go ahead and explain that right now? Well, open tuning. Because we were playing in C. Well, I use. And you have a low C going. You know, Bo Diddley uh, uses open E. Just like Derek Trucks gotcha. and Dwayne Allman and everybody. Okay. And I just take that shape and go down because I, I, I'm very limited uh, excuse for a singer. And so the, I like to roll <laughs> low and slow, slow go and low. Lower. I'm going low and lower. Yeah, just keep going down. <laughs> so it's like rubber bands. So it's C. But you use heavy, super heavy gauge? Super light. High action. These are tens. It's like rubber, okay. rubber bands. So C, G, E, C, G, C. So easy, it's uh, the easy. voicing of an E major yes. chord, but you're just l even lower. There it is. You're doing the opposite, though. Most most drop C is like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it to be lovely. You know, I grew up playing real distorted and gnarly, and a lot of that was just hiding my... Insecurity about exactly. your musical talent or whatever. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you think, oh, well, this room sounds like shit, or this amp sounds bad, or whatever. My dad said, look, you just have to play. You just accept the sound you have, make it as good as you can, and just play. Look, your amp is going to sound different at the gig than it did at Soundcheck. Yep. It's going to sound different in Denver than it does in New Orleans, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to sound different in every room. You just have to get beyond it and play. Since you grew up with a professional musician for a father, mm. producer, musician, Session player, right. Session player, you grew up with that all around you. Was there a time where you or your brother didn't want to play music? My brother's a natural. He could have been a scientist or a computer programmer, and he just fell right into music. And a younger brother, super, way better at guitar, drums, keyboard, everything. Yeah. Programming, recording. Me, I was not a natural, but I knew I was going to play guitar. I don't remember a time when I didn't know I was going to be a guitar player, but I had no natural affinity for okay. it. And I think that just knowing, having the focus and knowing what you want to do can be a greater advantage than natural talent even. For sure. Because I know talented musicians, it gets in their way because it messes with their head. Luther, what was the first riff you ever learned on guitar? It wasn't actually a riff. So I got my first electric when I was about seven or eight. It was a little baby strat tuned to standard tuning. And my dad was like, you learn three chords, I'll get you an amp. And so I was like, and my mom was like, just tune it open for him. Come on. <laughs> so he tuned it open and showed me Bo Diddley. And, and I was off and running. So my first riff was just really just the... So that was, I was it, up and running. And I've been overtuning ever since. So another thing, the word. With Robert, yes. Randolph, and John Modeski. So that's when I first discovered your music was that album. And I didn't know, once again, Southern California, forgive me, but uh, like that Sacred Steel thing. Dude, nobody knew. Nobody knew about Sacred Steel until the first Arhuli CD came out, uh, okay. Sacred Steel Volume 1. It's one of those records, like, you know, where it changes your life, literally changes your life. You know, like Live at the Fillmore. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, uh, Electric Ladyland. For me, those were the, the first two big ones. And then the, the word, the sacred steel. 
Medeski and I were both into it, and we had planned to do an instrumental gospel project before we even met Robert. It Ooh. sounds like a female gospel singer. Dude. Part of it's that vibrato, right? The vocal. Right. But you know that, what? Yeah. My friend Ray Ray, Robert's cousin that I play with, he was just talking about how slide players should play right on the note. Because I play so loose and, <laughs> and microtonal. So yeah, the that one string. That's because your your vocal cord is just one. Exactly, that's right. So you yeah. it definitely relates to that. Oh yeah. It's really helpful. People ask me about man, I'm trying to get slide going, you know, or even just thinking about the guitar. I think, man, think of it horizontally, like horizontal melody. To me, that unlocks the guitar. And then like two strings, just so like pick one string and play your favorite melody on it. Mm -hmm. You know, up and down each string, yeah. and then pick two strings, and then study just study two strings in the intervals. You know the shapes. Of, it does, then it doesn't matter what tuning you're gonna be in. You know, if you, if you get the intervals horizontally, like in your ears, in your heart, in your hand, it doesn't matter what key you're in or what string you're on or what tuning you're in. Yeah, and it's so ear based too. Yeah, because you gotta. You know, you gotta. And you know, you, you grow up playing in the boxes. Yeah. But then if you just forget all that and just play horizontally. It doesn't matter what time in your guitar journey or instrumental journey, but when you change your thinking. That's right. It adds back to the old way too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's f so freeing. I, you, know, you asked me about sacred steel music. Yeah. And we spoke about the slide, but the rhythm guitar is so important in Sacred Steel. Rhythm guitar is not my forte, but I try. It's such a lifelong quest not to rush. You know, I really like for rhythm guitar to turn the guitar down and play hard. Like when I play lead, I play really soft, I play loud and really soft. Now I'm not digging in at all. But I don't, I right. never do that. And, and, but when I play rhythm, I like to turn it down. That's a joyful sound. You know, like a, I like a little skinny pick, you know? Oh, for if, that. Get it flapping. Yeah. But it's so cool, because like, uh, if you're gonna swing, it's all in, in the ups, you know? And then Steve Ray Vaughan, he had that figure eight. Yeah. And also the fanning, like. Yeah! It's, oh, so much is in this hand, exactly. So tough. So tough. He did it wrong. <laughs> you guys don't have to type it. I'm just beating you to it. Vibratone guitar. Yeah. What's going on? First of all, I love the, the semi-hollow, the, the thin line vibe. Yeah. You know, my original concept, because I love finger-picked, open-tuned, country blues-type folk guitar, and I want, uh, 
I want an electric guitar to respond like that, just loud, you know? And for years and years and years, I followed, I thought the obvious choice was like Gibsons, arch tops, P90s. Oh, you have a signature 335. Yeah, yeah, but I, but you know what? That playing so loud on Gibsons with that, that lower mid range, it turned on me, man, and my ears became real sensitive to it. Yeah. So like that low oink. Yeah. Man, it hurts me so bad. And I've been running around playing that too loud my whole life. <laughs> yeah. So I went the Fender route. And it's funny because I tuned down. The long scale is better. It's more in tune. I love the springs. And Ry okay. was like, you know, it's a built-in uh, reverb chamber, you know, reverb tank. And then what really turned my life, my friend Steve Selvage, who plays with the Hold Steady. Yeah. Uh, we grew up together. But he turned me on to the wide range pickups. And the Fender humbuckers. Dude changed my game that's all i use now i built my whole new cleaner sound around and these are the lawler regals the, their version of the fender humbuckers yeah so my friend chris roberts and i we just uh we make parts casters we call them vibratone and we sold a bunch of them usually they're tellies or strat shape but we are actually designing some new shapes which is hard it's hard to reinvent the wheel we're all so traditional you know it's yeah. like you see a new shape guitar you're like Ugh. you know it's like <laughs> the main shapes are so classic you immediately compare any shape to Ever. what it's most similar to. My friend sent me a shape he was working on and I, I printed it out and started tracing on it and it just, I turned it into a strat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so wait, funny. no, this part's a little too big. It yeah, does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's out like, oh, it's just a strat. But they're so sexy. Yeah, know? yeah. Can anyone buy one if they wanted to buy one? Yeah, you know, we have Instagram and we've sold a bunch of them. The new uh, custom shapes are turning out good. We're, we're looking to uh, like Hound Dog Taylor shapes for inspiration and Nathan Beauregard and like Jimmy Reed, like all janky blues, uh, you know, Tysco type of type of shapes. Thank you, Luther. Luther Dickinson, you guys. Minute. Dude, that was so fun. Hopefully we can we can jam some more. Yes. Did I make the some, cut? Let's have some coffee and just freestyle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, we'll leave links below for all your various things going on. You're, you're always keeping nice and busy. And, and uh, hopefully this is just the first hang of many. I look forward to it. All right. Me too, man. Thanks again. We'll see you guys later.